I really want people to live a more beautiful life. And I think that that starts with the small things. Beauty can be big, but that's where we start getting into this territory that beauty is unattainable or living a beautiful life is unattainable. So I want to bring it back down to this, this level of the small, small things that you can do, small moments that are beautiful, that can bring you a flood of emotion or bring you a sense of fulfillment. And I think that those small things start with things that you tend to discard or not think about or not care about the objects that you come into contact with in your daily life, utilitarian objects or otherwise. I do not believe I am not of the camp, the school of thought that things that you come into contact with, oh, your toothbrush, oh, this building, oh, this uh, path that you walk every day, oh, all the ugly things that you see, it doesn't really affect you. You don't really even notice that. I genuinely think that that is not true. And I do think that you internalize things all the time and that they just go into your subconscious and they affect you in ways later that you may not really know the origin of your behavior. And so I'm trying to, to change to change uh, the direction of uh, where people's lives could go. A possibility that maybe you act differently or you look at things in a different way or your life becomes more beautiful. So I'm going to be talking about some things today that I think you're better off without. Ugly things that I have had myself at some point, not all of these, but uh, some of these things uh, that I chose to discard or things that I have seen, uh, on another person or in another person's life. And I'm just like, you do not need that. That's not doing you any good. So let's just get started, shall we? The first thing that I think that you should get rid of is that horrific lanyard ribbon thing, especially one that has like some kind of logo on it or something or other. Okay. I see this a lot on high school students who like just got their car i see it a lot on college students uh and just that's usually who i see it on and like i don't i think this video applies to people like that too uh i don't really care who you are i don't think that i think that you can add beauty into your life no matter what and i think that that lanyard that you're wearing is not doing you very good look i know that you've got keys to everything in your life on that keychain and it gets heavy i understand that and that's probably why having it around your neck is probably the most comfortable way to carry that around all the time i understand but beauty is not about comfort beauty is not about convenience and sometimes you gotta find a different way a more creative way to fix that problem a very good way to do this that I saw, that I personally like. Your solutions to these problems are up to you. Whatever you find beautiful, whatever avenue you choose to take, that's on you. But if you don't know who Stacey Nashimoto is, she is a lovely vintage curator uh, for her own label and uh, has her own fashion label as well. She is very good at taking Uh, finding solutions to those kinds of problems in an extremely like impossibly elegant way and she did the kind of lanyard type of idea but she has she sells a very very long pearl necklace like so long that it goes down to your hips and she whenever she was merchandising it and whenever she was doing her editorials with it she put keychain like keys on it and I thought that was so elegant and such a wonderful way to do that and that I thought that was genius you know take something like the, the this is still functional it's just amplified but yeah ditch the lanyard I don't think it's doing you doing you anything the second thing is going to be any type of opener for beer or wine ditch those ugly things a lot of the things that I end up talking about are things uh, that companies, for whatever reason, will uh, put their brand logo on and just sell it to the world for whatever reason, you know? Like, I see this with pens, I see this with like bottle openers and wine openers, I see this with lanyards, I see this with like sunglasses and stuff, they just like make crap with their logo on it and they sell it to people and people people buy it or they end up with it at some point in their life and then they're just using it no no 
When it comes to a bottle opener, there are so many cool vintage ones that you can get online. I found one actually at like a thrift, like antique type store, and it looks like a key, like a really big key, and it has a little notch in it so that you can open um, a bottle of beer. Um, I'm currently working on finding one for a really good one, like for wine, uh, because those are kind of difficult because most of those are like honestly really hideous to me. Uh, it's going to be hard to find that. But I know it may seem like nothing to go, you know, just to open a, a can of beer with, you know, there's even keychains, you know, that you can get that are just, you know, just the hook and that's it. And some people think that's fine. But why not elevate that? Everything you touch, you know, it's it becomes more of a thought, like a meditation on the process of opening it and the celebration, whatever it is you're celebrating with that beer. Maybe it was a long day, hard work or just your day off or something like that. I don't know. Whenever you're changing these these everyday objects into something that is beautiful, it's a celebration of whatever it is you're using it for. You're honoring the thing that you're doing. So... Yeah, there are a lot of really cool bottle openers, vintage ones or otherwise that you can get uh, that are made of metal or whatever, just like polished or just look better or designed nicely. They're, they can just look better than, than just, I don't know, one that has like the Home Depot logo on it. You know, why? Why? Number three, this is a really funny thing. This is not even an object, but it is something that you have in your house and a lot of uh, new apartments and new homes and stuff. And this is recess lighting, LED recess lighting. Now, this is something that I uh, grew up with. Maybe not, maybe not grow, grew up with like in the very beginning of my life, but um, whenever, uh, whenever my parents remodeled, their home we had a lot of recess lighting like in the living room and in the basement and I think just in general a lot of us have lived in places apartments houses otherwise that have bright ass lighting whether it's like led and it's like bright bright or it's just like horrible incandescent lighting that comes from the ceiling that just like bathes everything in this like yellow ickiness do yourself a favor and don't ever turn those lights on ever again ever again do things in like dim lighting and i know that's that's going to be something to get used to like i said beauty is not about convenience uh and somebody uh somebody as blind as i am i have horrible eyesight it can be kind of difficult to do things in dim lighting sometimes i have to sometimes i have to use like a bright lamp you know but use a lamp recess lighting overhead lighting for any reason like don't you don't need that it's why does everything need to be bathed in light like that it's just like too too much you know like poeticize your life a little bit and like allow a lot of your life to be in shadow like that's just so much better <laughs> lighting from above is hideous in like every way unless you're trying to display something in a museum even museums i don't know if you guys have noticed this but if you go to museums a lot of the time they use like angled and very deliberate lighting to actually enhance whatever it is that is on display so keep that in mind a lot of like well-designed spaces do not have recess lighting they have lighting that is carefully planned uh, whether it's from below or from the side or there's some kind of like fixture or a sconce or something like that um man like recess lighting like above lighting that's bright or incandescent and just like gross and yellow like horrible get a lamp get some candles low low lighting you know it's just like less harsh and yeah like this is a great, great thing. Like if you live, uh, I've suggested this before. If you live, let's say in a, an apartment or any kind of domestic situation where you can't exactly get new furniture or change your surroundings too much, turn off all the lights and get yourself a candle. Get yourself a candle, put that candle on whatever, whatever piece of furniture you can control the look of. And that's it. You can just, you have eliminated all that background crap that is not doing you any favors all that ugliness you're removing that you're erasing it with shadow with darkness <laughs> use light to your advantage um highlight what you want to see and <laughs> let the rest fall into the background that's what i think is great recess lighting is just ugly 
it just is it it makes everything look horrible so yeah get yourself a lamp or a candle now we're going to be talking about the thing that this video references in the thumbnail and that is stanley cups now there seems to be some kind of like divide among people where uh people think that like they're either like oh stanley cups are not that bad uh and then there's people like me who think that stanley cups should never have been created they should never have been made there is not one thing aside from the amount of fluid that this thing can hold there's not one good thing about a stanley cup and i mean that in several ways like something as hideous as cumbersome as awkward awkward to hold and heavy you could you couldn't you could not give them to me for free i don't want a stanley cup i don't even i think they are atrocious just to look at and yet people are begging for them they want them for christmas people want stanley cups for christmas i i can't i can't wrap my head around that i don't understand i don't get it and because i, I don't get it because there is nothing to get there is not one good design feature about that because whatever problem that this thing is designed to solve okay it's been done in a far better way in a cheaper way there are plenty of other options for you to contain and insulate whatever beverage it is that you want to drink and you don't need a stanley cup for that you might as well carry around a bag with a plastic bin in it and a straw and drink your water out of that it hurts it hurts me to look at it and I'm gonna say one more thing if you guys have ever read um, Arabois or Against the Grain by Wiesmans there's actually a point uh, so he's he's an esthete he loves beauty and all this and he tries to create this like sanctum away from society uh, that is like beautiful and filled with art and all this crap <laughs> And uh, it comes to this point uh, before he moves that he that he uh, brushes shoulders with somebody in uh, on the street and he has a mental breakdown. He like bursts into tears because he can't stand being around other people. And that is how I feel when I look at a Stanley Cup. I actually I look at that and it makes me want to die that something like that is being carried around by people and it's actually being coveted, coveted by people people want that in their life it uh it makes me so sad i feel like visually it literally offends me it offend, it, it it makes me mad that you whoever's choice it was to get that i have to witness that and i have to look at that thanks a lot all right we're moving on next thing we're going to talk about i don't even know what the hell what number i'm on anymore because god i got so upset about that but you know you got to get upset about things like that otherwise you know just gets forgotten and we cannot forget history. You can't forget about the Stanley Cup being made. We should never make that mistake again. The next thing I'm going to talk about is house scissors. It's going to be a real short one, you know. Uh, you can just go to like office, office Max or whatever. And you can just get like a nice plain metal pair of house scissors. But those are good. You know, scissors are not complicated. They're functional, but they're elegant. They always have been. But we've found some way to make them very ugly by putting these like gripped handles on them and they're like awful colors like gray and red and like horrific shades of blue and stuff like that. Just just get a metal one, you know? Just get one. There's actually really beautiful ones that you can buy online that are like, again, like vintage or they're like, I found ones that are like uh, Vietnamese ones, but I can't buy them because the company will not send them to the US. I think the company was called Objects of Use. They won't send them to me. But uh, the Good Liver is a really good place for utilitarian objects such as scissors. You'll pay, yeah, the price range is like pretty all over the place, honestly. You can pay a lot for something, you can pay very little. But yeah, get yourself like, yeah, a stapler, like stuff like that. Uh, it's nice to just be like, oh, I'm cutting something, but man, look at those scissors. Like, those are so beautiful. They're really doing their job and just so sleek and, like, well-designed. They're just so nice, you know? They're just slicing something. It's great. Get yourself some nice house scissors, you know? 
just a nice black handle, metal, whatever. That'll that'll really that'll change the way you like open a letter or open a box or you know, cut paper or cut ribbon or whatever it is that you're doing, you know, that'll again, it uh it elevates the experience, okay? I'm like moving with the sun, like as I'm talking, because the sun is setting. The next thing and I have been victim to this, but I have found a way to figure this out. So the next thing that you need to get rid of that's very, very ugly is plastic organizing bins. Plastic organizing bins. So I'm talking the, like about the ones that you go to like Target or Walmart or uh, whatever. And uh, they're, made of, they're made of plastic and they're meant to organize things like uh, socks or jars of things or whatever. They're just bins to hold things. And sometimes they're awful and they're like white and they're perforated and they have like a, like a blue handle or something like that. Get rid of it. Goodbye. Don't need that. There are ways for you to not have to look at that every single day to not have to put your precious things like your underwear in something like that. You know, I used to have those. I used to have them. They're from like Ikea. Awful. Ikea is generally, as a rule of thumb, Ikea is pretty good with design, but some things just do not fit with other things. Ikea's got a vision, which is a Scandinavian aesthetic, okay? And if you don't get like other things that are from Ikea, it will clash with things. So keep that in mind. Harmonious environments and like beautiful things or anything that you purchase, cheap or not, just make sure that it uh, makes sense with your environment. That's, that's half of the reason why ugliness is so prominent is because people don't know how to incorporate uh, whatever it is that the functional item or the beautiful item with the rest of the surroundings of the house or, uh, you know, just their life in general. It's like the same reason why like, same thing that like some people just don't know how to dress they don't know how to like coordinate an outfit it's the same thing it's just you have to find balance and there's like principles that are associated with that that you can figure out but yeah uh truth be told my aesthetic and i'd say like most people's aesthetic like nobody needs like a white perforated bin with like black handles it just like doesn't look very good and it just looks cheap okay so a solution that i have found to this for me i found that like at TJ Maxx or Marshalls, Home Goods, uh, they have these like velvet covered boxes. Uh, usually people put things like papers and stationery in those things, but I love to put like my underwear in them. Um, if I don't have a, another proper piece of furniture, I, I want to have like a, like a cabinet almost like for my, for my lingerie, but that's what I put a lot of my stuff in now. It's just like a big, pretty big box that has pink velvet over top and it looks really nice with the color scheme of my room yeah basically this one is like i don't always have i can tell you what i would think would be nice but you gotta you gotta decide for yourself what is going to be more harmonious with your surroundings i just don't think that those plastic bins are doing you any any good i'd rather like go out and buy a a, some thrifted furniture or something to hold my stuff that has drawers <laughs> in within this uh within this category that we're talking about i suppose uh, another thing to get rid of to ditch are those horrible like fabric organizers that hold things like shoes and like jewelry they're like vera bradley like paisley or something like that oh no get rid of it get rid of it like you don't you don't need that get a jewelry box for your jewelry and like honestly anybody who has that much jewelry that can't fit it into a proper jewelry box like it's probably i'm sorry like a lot of your shit's probably cheap and awful and you probably don't even wear it i say that because i used to have one of those and half of my jewelry i didn't wear i decided to donate a lot of it and like just get rid of that thing and like keep things things that I really liked and boom I didn't have a lot of stuff that I really liked I ended up having like a few things and I'm able to put them in a proper like jewelry box I don't have a lot of shoes they're able to fit in my closet it's like these like horrifically ugly things these organizers and stuff that are meant to like compartmentalize and like help with uh uh people who have too much stuff that's your problem right there you got too much stuff too much stuff that you've forgotten about too much stuff that you don't care about over consumption problem 
that's what that sounds like to me if you're getting like an organizer for your for your 40th pair of shoes that you and your other shoes you like don't even wear god just they're just awful put your shoes on the ground put them on the ground put your jewelry in a jewelry box you've got too much clothing figure it out don't buy so much stuff. Have a few things that you like, good quality. Don't change your identity every three months. And maybe you won't need organizational solutions to these problems. Just saying. The next thing, the next ugly thing that I think you should get rid of is fake plants. Do not have fake plants in your life. Fake plants are literally there to collect dust because you're too lazy to keep up with them and to water them to take care of them either don't have fake plants and get fresh ones and like participate in the ritual it is to get them and to cut them and to take care of them or just don't have fake plants there is nothing that cheapens a space more than fake plants i'm so serious you can tell they're fake you can like it's like you can walk into a room and you can tell that like a, a dummy or like a like a wax figure is like a fake person you're just like ew there's something off-putting there's something unnerving about fake plants there are there are other ways to to make a space look beautiful than put a fake plant in there like a fake spider plant or whatever you know just get a plant take care of it or just don't have those just don't have them like where is that fake plant gonna go one day whenever you're not using it anymore that thing is gonna be there forever it's going to be on this planet forever. Now, this is with the exception of certain types of man-made, like bouquets and flowers and things. Like, uh, I think that there is, like, there's literally, like, an entire old, like, art form of using, like, silk and stuff like that to make, like, fake plants and flowers. Those are the exception. But to be honest with you, those are, like, collectible. And, like, most people who have them have them in display cases. <laughs> and they don't collect dust you know they're it's like uh i don't know it's almost like on par with uh having a taxidermied animal or something like that usually they're they're collectible they're antique and there's something that you take care of or like paper paper uh paper flower arrangements and stuff i think those are really cool but yeah i'm just saying to like make the space look better or whatever like you just nobody needs fake plants Nobody needs them. And usually the fake plants that are like created or whatever, they're just the worst arrangements ever. They look like they belong in an old person's house. And then like succulents, that's even more unnerving. You don't even know what's real anymore. All right. This is the last thing I'm going to say. It's actually, it's about to be sunset, which is so cool. Last thing I'm going to say, uh, it's kind of in that, in that same vein, just, uh, things have really started to decline when it comes to furniture an ugly thing that you should probably just like completely and totally avoid is any kind of furniture that has fake wood or fake marble any kind of trompe type of thing is the worst thing you can have around you okay and there is really no excuse to have horrible cheaply made stuff in your house when I mean, you can go to a place like a thrift store you can go to an antique mall you can go to places or like there's uh, estate sales there's all kinds of things all kinds of places that you can go to and you can get proper furniture that's like made of stuff there is an epidemic when it comes to furniture right now because of how how uh displaced people are all the time uh, uh shipping the the weight of furniture uh needs to be lighter you know the things that they're making the furniture out of is like composite woods that are like not even fully you know full panels of wood it's like it's like uh ground down pieces they're not meant to last they break easily that ain't doing you no good <laughs> there is nothing nothing that you're going to gain from interacting with a piece of furniture that isn't a real piece of furniture it, does that make sense like like i see this all the time you know i'm seeing it more and more now you're, you're seeing it like home goods or you're seeing it at like a target or something like the the fakeness of things is getting out of hand and when you are coming into contact with things that are not made well all the time there's an aura there's an aura to that <laughs> things that are made poorly 
affect you because there's like no soul to it there's no soul to that thing if you have the have the ability let's say to buy something that's handmade or something that is done with craftsmanship maybe it is you know assisted by a machine or even made by one but at least it's made with like proper materials and things like this there there's a weight there's a soul to that thing and that soul that thing interacts with your soul and it does something to you whenever you're interacting with these fake things that are just made for function to function for like two years not even that are that are made to be disposed why would you want to interact with something disposable all the time i just don't understand that how does that affect you mentally you know if you're just interacting with things you're like oh yeah i'm just gonna get rid of this What about permanence? You know, like what about like not things don't have to be transient in your life all the time. You know, like it's good to keep things. And that that starts with things that you interact with all the time. Like we are we are entering this time period where everything is transient and we don't hold on to things anymore. And it shows in how we interact with one another, how our friendships are, our lovers are. Okay, it's cha- it changes who we are as a society, how our things are made, what we choose to interact with, what we choose to purchase. That says something about us and whoever creates the items that we come into contact with. It says something about them, what they create. Things are not just things. Ugliness is not just ugliness. It's not something that just passes right through you, doesn't affect you, doesn't corrupt you in any way. Of course it does. <laughs> Everything starts with a person. So I'm, I'm literally saying something that I've been, that I actually wrote in like a post about my shoes on Instagram. I'm, re- I'm reiterating what I'm saying there. Things are not just things. The soul of an object, right? The soul that I'm talking about in an object doesn't come from like the object itself. The soul is imparted from the creator of the object. So whatever it is that you're holding, that you're you're touching, that you're dealing with or whatever, how it's made, what it's made of, what it looks like, how it's designed, what its function is, all of those things, its history, you know, like what it took to make that thing, you know, that says something about the creator. And basically, so what, so, you know, uh, by proxy, the thing that you come into contact with every day, you are interacting with the person who made it all the time. So you are, you are having all the time a kind of social, parasocial relationship with the objects that you come into contact with, which is why it's so fucking important for things to be beautiful, for things to be made well. It's because it's like it's like talking to a person every day it's like interacting with someone a person every day and we talk all the time about how like energies bother us and how like this vibe is wrong and it's like well what about the vibe of like your beer opener your bottle opener what about the vibe of your couch they have vibes too ugly things impart a kind of vibe okay hate to use that word but i'm trying to use a terminology that like makes sense to people the things that you interact with are important having beautiful things around you well-made things few of those things so that you actually appreciate what you have that all matters it affects you it does something to you it changes your behavior it changes your values your morals everything that's what this video is about that's what like all my videos are about all right i have said enough i believe I have dissed enough things that people come into contact with all the time and probably some people's like most beloved things I have probably talked enough shit on today. But yeah, that's how I feel. If you do not resonate with anything that I say in this video, then good, this video is not for you. But if this does affect you, if this does change the way that you think about things, then awesome. Um, I'm happy that you empathize with me. But that is it for today. Please do not forget to like and subscribe, especially if you liked this video. Leave a comment. Leave your thoughts. If they're mean or if you are if you praise what I say, whatever. I'm open to it all. It's fine. Yeah. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, uh, your weekend. I hope you have a lovely weekend. And I will see you guys next week. Bye-bye.